Why am I not getting anything? Ah, oh, there we are! <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to day two of our own challenge right here on Facebook Live. So happy to have you here with me, whether you are um, live. Okay, I know people are getting the video because I see little hearts going across my screen. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, you might be watching live and you may be catching us on the replay. The most important thing is that you are here and we are going to practice and chant OM together. So welcome. Uh, hey, listen, I just want to address what happened yesterday with the static on the video. Oh my gosh, when I was recording, I was using my laptop to do that Facebook Live and there was no static on my end. Okay, so when I got off uh, the call, and it was so beautiful, the energy was so great, and I kept hearing these comments of static, static, I thought, okay, let me take responsibility for this. Let me find out what was going on. And what I found out was, and this might be an interesting piece of information for you, is that when you are doing these Facebook Lives from a computer or a laptop, and you have too many tabs open, it can cause static. And boy, oh boy, I have so many tabs and pages open right now because I have just been doing research about so many things. So I thought today I'm going to my cell phone, <laughs> okay? And hopefully this is going to be uh, so much better. I even sent the audio to my Wiz audio guy and asked him, is there something you can do to clean this up? And he said, oh, I'm so sorry, Esther, I can't do anything with this. So day one is as it is. For those of you who actually listened to the whole thing, thank you. Because the energy and the information was, was beautiful. I don't want to re-record that. And you know, it's really interesting because that's, sometimes that's how life goes, right? We have to wade through the static to get the jewel, to get the blessing. And I am so glad that we were chanting OM yesterday, getting centered and grounded, because after when I found out there was a static issue, man, oh man, I was just, okay, here it is. I didn't get upset. I didn't go into, oh, people are going to think I suck. I, I was just like, let's figure this out. Let's make sure that we have a different result the next day. And today is the next day. So welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I am going to recap. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I am going to recap a little bit because of the static issue of yesterday. So this own challenge was birth to give each of you, um, and in many cases to remind you that there is a beautiful spiritual tool, OM, chanting OM, the symbol OM, that you can use at any time, anywhere, as part of your spiritual practice to connect with your I am presence, your divinity, to connect to the universe within the universe all around you. It is a very primal energy and frequency of the universe. It is a symbol, it is a mantra that is used by millions of people around the world. And I use it not only to connect within, but also to connect with that still point the place of neutrality. I find it's great for grounding at any time. And there are so many other benefits to it. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. The real purpose, I, I mean, I woke up one morning just a few days ago and I heard Esther do an OM challenge. And I'm like, what do you mean do an OM challenge? And then I sat the information come. Because right now in this world, we are going through some very crazy times. It seems like every morning I wake up and even though it's beautiful sunshine, there's something happening in the world that makes us question, wonder, um, sometimes go into confusion. I know a lot of the collective goes into fear. And chanting OM and using the OM symbol really helps bring, bring us back, right? That stillness, that place of neutrality. I work with zero point energy. This is just another tool to do that 
to, to, to ground us during these crazy times. And also because we're coming up to eclipse season, right? The first eclipse is happening uh, January 31st. It is a lunar eclipse, which means it is a full moon. That's going to kick off eclipse season, which goes right until equinox, which is March 20th. <laughs> And um, eclipse season happens twice a year, and it is those times of the year when very big, dramatic, sudden change happens, U-turns in your life are possible, um, everything from, oh wow, this is fantastic, to uh oh, what am I going to do? And how I liken this is, eclipse season seems to be, I mean, universe can work with us to make change at any times, but during eclipse season, it's like the energies in the cosmos are aligned in such a way that we have um, major doors open or course corrections. So how I see it is, universe looking at, I'm going to use me as an example, saying, Esther, I hear you praying, I hear you asking, I hear you attending and allowing. And you have been taking steps and lining up and lining up and lining up and here's your manifestation. And I go, wow, <laughs> thank you. I've just co-created something beautiful with the universe. And then sometimes the universe says, Esther, I hear you praying. I hear you asking. I hear you intending. I hear you crying out to me. But here's the problem, sweetheart. What you want is on this vibrational track over here, and you're over here on this vibrational track, and I need to get you from here to there, and you're missing the clues, and you're not hearing, and I know you really want this, and I love you so much that I want you to have the desires of your heart, that I am going to course correct you over here so that you can get into alignment. Sometimes that can be a little bit uncomfortable, right? Like when you're on a train and the train changes tracks and you go boom, boom, right? There's a boom, boom. And it's different from one person to another. I mean, sometimes I've had really dramatic uh, eclipses and sometimes I've sailed through them. Um, but that's what happens. And what I am receiving is that this eclipse season is going to be very different because we are starting off with the lunar eclipse which is connected to the solar eclipse of August which was the great American solar eclipse right across America which we know shook up, shook up everything, not just in the U.S., Okay, but all over the world. I'm, I'm Canadian. I felt the shakeup too because what happens in the U.S. really has a ripple effect throughout the whole world. Some people may say the shakeup was amazing because we've had truth revealed. We're facing issues, things that were never addressed before are, are being addressed, right? Um, and other people are saying, oh no, it seems to be getting worse. And it just really depends on where you are with your concept of reality, your perspective, and what's happening is that energy of that solar eclipse is going to be re-triggered again with the lunar eclipse, okay? And so, you know, that's why I offer these eclipse events. We're going to be doing one again starting January 31st to not only offer you energetic support, which I do, you know, in loads, but also to give the group that I'm working with, like, understanding of what's going on specific to our group, um, you know, energy transmission calls, opening consciousness, always bringing new awareness to the group, keep opening consciousness, expanding, expanding, expanding into greater possibilities. And then I thought, but let's give everybody something that they can hold on to during this eclipse season, during these crazy times. And that was the OM tool, something you can use, something you can teach your children and remind your, your, your friend, your girlfriend, your guy friend when you're having coffee, remind them to OM, to get centered, to, to get grounded, to connect with the divinity within. So, my loves, yesterday we learned that the proper pronunciation of OM when you're chanting is AUM, A-U-M. All right, and we also learned, please don't get hung up on how long you ohm or the tone or the sound or if you ohm and you <laughs> choke a little bit at the beginning. The key is to use it and to practice it and um, 
and just begin to incorporate it in your life. Now, hold on, I've got, you know what? I've got a little drippy nose and it's interesting because one of the tips I wanted to tell you is that when you ohm, and if you do it for like two to five minutes, you may find your sinuses clear. <laughs> and I was ohming prior to this Facebook Live and I can feel my sinuses clearing. So just a little extra piece of information. I hope you are practicing. I know I can hear hello, uh, good evening everyone. I see the comments coming in. Sometimes the print is just a little bit too small for me. Uh, but I hope you were practicing yesterday, okay? You know, what did you notice? How did you feel? I can tell you, I felt so grounded, so grounded after just the little bit of practice that we did. And that really carried on through my whole day so that at the end of the night when I went to my bedroom and I looked out the window because I've got a view of um, part of the sea here in Malaysia where I am right now, and I was just giving gratitude to universe for everything that we had done and created and, you know, the bumps and the blessings. And I really acknowledged in that moment, wow, oming with all of you really put me on this beautiful course throughout the whole day. Okay. So I, you know, just take a moment and reflect how that may have affected your day. What we're going to do today is we're gonna jump in right away. We are going to do three sets of oming, okay? Then we're going to come back, regroup for a moment. I'm going to tell you a few more benefits of oming to get you really excited about it. Then we're gonna end off with two more rounds of oming to either set you off to slumber, because I know on the East Coast of America, it's nighttime for you. For some of you, it's morning, you know, in Europe and Asia, it's morning to set off into our day, all right? So, uh, it's Aum. I suggest you do it with your eyes closed. I'm gonna do it with my eyes closed. Hand positions, you can either have your palms open and up. I like prayer position in front of my heart. Some people like to do a mudra, or you might want to put your hands on your um, lap but palms up, just none of this, okay? <laughs> none of that. All right, so let's get ready. <sighs> We're gonna do three sets of three. All right, so close your eyes if that feels right for you and choose your hand position and let us begin. Um. Just notice how you feel. Are you feeling the vibrations? I can feel the vibrations on my lips, through my throat, in my chest. I feel deep, deep emotion welling up. What I'm really noticing is it's very different when I do it on my own compared to doing it with a group like all of you. Wow. Let's do one more round before we break and then chant our way into the night or day. Aum.
Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Just open your eyes. Bring your awareness back into the room just for a moment. Wow, I have a lot of emotion coming up. That touched something very deep and it's, it's to do with you. I can, I can feel it. it. It has to do with you and just connecting in oneness with you. Oh, wow. We're going to do a lot of this in the eclipse event. This is wonderful. Thank you for being here. So just check in with yourself to notice how you feel. Okay. We're just, we want to flush out any of that self-consciousness about oming or I'm not doing it right. You cannot do this wrong. Okay. Universe gave us very simple practices and simple spiritual tools to use to navigate life here on planet Earth. We have way overcomplicated everything. And one of my focuses is really to bring everything back to simplicity. You may have heard me write on Facebook several times, gimmicks are not required. It's very simple. We want to get back to simplicity. Okay? It was not meant to be difficult. Okay, I know that there are energies and powers that want to make it difficult for us, but we are of the light. And as I keep writing, you know, the light always wins, but right now on Earth, on my timeline, the light wins. You're here with me, so in some way you're on my timeline, which is really great. Okay, perfect. So as, just as you're regrouping, um, there's a lot of other benefits to doing OM, and I want to share these with you. First of all, um, to clear the air. To clear the air. Sorry, my sinuses. Wow, remember, clearing sinuses. <laughs> Anybody else having that happen? Clear the air. You can clear your atmosphere, okay, by chanting OM. I know we use sage, you know, there's different sprays you can use. All you have to do is OM. All you have to do is ohm. So if, if you have a family gathering, maybe there's an argument, a tension, maybe there's an energy in the air um, that's just like, ooh, this is not, you know, of a high vibration, ohm. It'll clear the air, the energy, right? If you're going on holiday and you walk into a hotel room and you're like, ooh, this energy doesn't feel so great, ohm, right? Because in hotel rooms, they don't let you light incense anymore, right? You can't do any of that. Just ohm, chant the energy away so you can change your environment very easily. Do it at work. Do it at work. It's very easy to do. You can ohm silently as well. I find silent ohming is personally hard for me, but you can silent ohm as well. When you ohm on a regular basis, and if you begin to build up your practice, so it goes two minutes, five minutes, you know, even more. I honestly, I don't do more than two minutes at a time. I'm going to be really truthful with you. It will uh, lower stress levels, and it's been shown to um, lower blood pressure. So it's very calming on the body, very soothing. Concentration and focus after increases, which completely I found yesterday. Um, it will strengthen your voice, okay? So physically, it's going to strengthen your voice, but also we know that this is the throat chakra, it is our self-power, it is voicing our truth, and uh, it's going to strengthen our voice. Now, hold on, there's a comment coming in. I just wanna read this. Yes, this is coming in from Lorraine, and she says, yes, oming with a group is really, really different, and I can feel it so much, so I'm so glad that you're here. Um, and what I have found is that if you incorporate this, right, even if you do it once in the morning or at the end of the night, that's all you remember for like a chant of three, eventually, it, you know, it'll start to... Um, help further expand your third eye. Now, I'm going to set the record straight here. If you are watching this, your third eye is already opened to some degree. It has to be, otherwise you would not be receptive to this type of information. So please do not let anybody tell you your third eye is closed. Okay, it is open to some degree. And we are further always expanding our, our, our third eye through 
uh, nutrition, through supplementation, through prayer, through meditation, through visualization. I do inner work sessions with people where we find what other blocks are and we peel those away. Um, but also chanting OM will help to stimulate your third eye, that knowing center. So, you know, my intention is to help you get through eclipse season, but look at all these other beautiful benefits for you when you're chanting OM. Okay? So, we are going to do one more round to set us off. Tomorrow is day three. Day three, I am not going to go through all this preliminary information again. Okay, I will just say hello, do a little introduction at the beginning, and then we are going to OM. We are going to OM until energetically I am told that's enough for now, <laughs> all right, because we've been practicing and getting in the groove. But let us end off with some beautiful OMing together. Um, I'm getting two rounds of three, but I think what's coming in, I see now we're going to do three rounds of three, okay? So choose your hand position. You might want to try a different hand position this time just to see how it feels. And close your eyes. Oh, so grateful for all of you. Let us begin. Um. You can continue to chant OM if it feels right for you. If you feel you are complete, open your eyes and bring your awareness back into the room. Thank you for being here. If you benefited from this, please share this clip with someone. Uh, I know there's some people not on Facebook Live, so I am also going to post this to my YouTube channel. And I will meet you same time, same place tomorrow, January 17th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And we are going to OM for as long as the guidance tells me to keep going. All right? So love you. Blessings. Thank you for being here. Uh, I am going to take time to read all of your comments and respond back if there's any questions. Please let me know your experience if you like this kind of um, event, and perhaps we'll do more of it, all right? So, ciao, love everybody, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.